because the 7950X3D has so many cores, 16 cores, it's actually split across two different chiplets. So one of these chiplets, or, or CCXs or CCDs, uh, has the V-cache on it, and it's clocked down a little bit compared to the 7950X um, because it has that V-cache. And this chiplet, the other one, has uh, no 3D V-cache, but it has a higher frequency. That makes this really special because not only is it going to run games like gangbusters crazy good but it is going to also run those high core count productivity applications really well too that makes this you know you don't have to like pick between 3d vcache gaming pc or a high core count productivity cpu uh like you did last generation this chip does everything and it does everything insanely well incredible gaming performance from the 3v cache and powerful productivity performance from the 16 core layout we rog have a number of great motherboards that you can pair with this uh today i'm using the rog crosshair x670e hero with this bad boy which is just like our our super feature rich uh feature rich um motherboard for you know high level enthusiasts uh, it's got all the features that you could want for this. We also have um, some ROG Strix X670E options, as well as uh, a tough gaming uh, X670E option as well, um, if you're uh, looking for more of a just the essentials kind of route. Uh, one thing, or a few things to keep in mind. So you've got the chip in hand, okay? You go to Newegg, you could, can't go to Newegg, I guess, but you could go to Newegg.com and buy the CPU, it comes to your house. What do you do next? Well, you've got the motherboard. If you do this tomorrow and you get a motherboard that's been on the shelf and it doesn't have the latest BIOS, you're going to want to go to our site and download the latest BIOS for your motherboard first. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really important in order to get this chip working. So here's the BIOS. It's available on the site. If you don't, uh, if all you have is this CPU, right, um, and uh, you you can't boot the PC to get into the BIOS to update it, you can use our handy dandy BIOS flashback tool. There's a little bit, little button on a number of our motherboards that you uh, can put the BIOS on a flash drive, plug it in. There's a specific USB the, drive the, for the BIOS flashback. Yep, with yep. the computer off, you just press the BIOS flashback button and it will flash the BIOS for you, even if there's no CPU or RAM in the machine. That's awesome. That is so cool and really useful when you've got a new CPU like this um, and the BIOS hasn't been updated for it yet. So download the latest BIOS, flash it with BIOS flashback. The other thing that you will want to do, um, oops, that's not the right tab, is go to the driver and tools tab on our site and make sure you also download the latest chipset drivers. Uh, if you're building a new PC, this is probably something you would do anyway, but make sure that you do that. Uh, if you already have a PC and you're swapping in a new CPU like I did, you're still going to want to download the latest chipset drivers because that has uh, the drivers necessary to uh, determine which tasks go to which of these uh, two CCDs, right? That's really important uh, if you want to get the best performance out of your, your gaming and your productivity uh, tasks. So make sure that you download the latest BIOS. Make sure you download the latest chipset drivers, and you should be good to go. Now, let's actually head over to the BIOS. Uh, sorry, oh, I'm checking yeah. the chat here. Apart from the up-to-date BIOS, you also want to make sure that you have Xbox Game Bar installed and up-to-date because that's actually uh, what AMD and Microsoft are using to determine whether a game is running and whether it should be running on that uh, CCX with the 3D B cache. So make sure that you have Game Bar installed and updated too. Most people should, but sometimes on a new PC, you have to actually open the Xbox app and like let it like reinstall itself. So yes, make sure you do that as well. Thank you for that note. All right. So... Uh, Something that you guys should should know about this particular chip, um, you cannot overclock it in the in the traditional sense. Um, and when I say traditional, I mean like last ten years traditional, not really traditional. Uh, traditionally, you you have a, a multiplier uh, for the CPU that you can go in and just kind of bump it up and and play with the timings and stuff. Um, you can't do that with with this. It's not quite that easy uh, with these CPUs. That is kind of locked down. However, you do have some tweaking options to kind of get the most out of this. So the first thing that I would do is make sure that you have the AI overclock tuner and turn on Expo to make sure that you're getting the max uh, frequency and uh, latency out of your RAM. So definitely do that. 
Uh, and then if you want to play with some other stuff, um, Precision Boost Overdrive is still available on the X3D chips, okay? So you can come here and um, set this to enabled, and you'll get just a little bit more performance out of the chip because it'll boost a little bit higher, a little bit longer. You can do manual tuning if you want, although I think from, from what I've seen, these limits are pretty close to their height. Uh, you can also um, play with the curve optimizer. So this is a little bit more advanced. Um, and But if you remember our stream uh, a couple months ago, this basically lets you undervolt individual cores, which will let those cores boost higher depending on what's stable for that core. So this core might be able to undervolt a little bit further than this core or this core, which means that the further you can undervolt each individual core, the more it's gonna boost. So that can give you some extra performance too. I've seen some decent results from that from uh, other people on the web. The, uh, let me double check here. The, yeah, you can also play with the F max boost override as well, um, which gives you a little bit more room to play with there. One other thing I wanna call out here, Precision Boost Overdrive, if you set this to enhancement, um, this is a feature that we, a ROG, added uh, to our motherboards. Um, if you remember with the original 7000 series processors, they were designed to um, go up to 95 degrees Celsius in temperatures because AMD really wanted to maximize the performance of these chips. It's perfectly safe at those temperatures, but some people um, just get a little hung up on temperatures and they want things a little bit lower because they, that's just what they're more comfortable with. So we added this feature. You can now set PBO enhancement to level one, two, or three, depending on the temperature limit that you want uh, for your CPU. And on wow. this chip, the 7950X3D is actually, um, doesn't go as high thermally. It's actually limited to more like 85 degrees is what AMD is aiming for on this chip. So I didn't see like any huge performance boosts by setting the thermal limit here, but if 85 is even too high for you, I would I would strongly urge you to leave it where it is because you're going to get the most performance that way, and 85 is not that high. But if you want it even lower, you could set this to 70 degrees. You would lose a bit of performance, but your CPU would run cooler, your fans would run quieter. If that's a thing you want to do, that is a thing that you can do with the ROG BIOS. Finally, if you are really advanced, uh, you can also play with like the E-Clock um to push things even further i'm not going to detail any of that today because that's like that's really kind of more advanced overclocking but uh there's some pretty if you can like really really dial it in it's hard to test for because you have to test it at like idle and low loads and high loads but you can actually overclock this chip if you really know what you're doing there's just not like a easy multiplier overclocking one last thing that i want to call out here where i gotta remember where the setting is advanced Extreme Tweaker, it's down here in Core Flex. So, like we talked about earlier, right? Um, you have those two different CCDs uh, on the chip, and uh, Microsoft and AMD are working together to ensure that the system chooses the correct CCD for uh, any given task at hand, right? So that uh, if you're running a game that's really going to benefit from that vCache, it's going to prioritize the CCD that has the vCache on it. And if you're running a multi-threaded productivity application that, that wants more frequency and doesn't care as much about cache, that it's going to prioritize that CCD. If you find yourself in an area where you want to manually decide which CCD to use, um, maybe you're running a program that hasn't been optimized for these CPUs yet, or you know, you're just you're trying to fiddle with things and test things out, uh, you can do that. So there are two places to do that. You can actually, if you go to advanced, um, I think I believe it's down here, AMD CBS, and then SMU common, here it is, SMU common options. You can set uh, the preferred core. You can prefer the frequency core for everything or prefer the cache for everything. Um, I believe driver should be the same as auto, but I'm not positive. That will just use let the driver determine uh, what it wants to do. The other thing you can do that is even more advanced, if you go over here and go into Core Flex, you can actually set a very advanced algorithm for which CCDs are prioritized in which scenarios. So if you click this Load X3D Core Flex Gaming preset, that's like a preset that we added in. Um, and it it basically, CCD zero is the Vcache C, uh, CCD, CCD one is the higher clocked CCD. So this gaming profile basically says, uh, you know, if if uh, if the load the uh, the load is between twenty and fifty amps, 
on that on the CPU, uh, use CCD zero with the vcache. That's level two here in between 20 and 50. And if it's above that, if it's like a really high core count productivity load, then prioritize uh, the CCD with the higher clocks. And you, you can, can tweak those with, numbers? Yeah, you can yeah. tweak these numbers manually. So if you're trying to get it, and there's also a memory threshold. So it's this is really for high memory, uh, memory intensive applications. So memory intensive applications like with less than eight cores, like a game, um, will will theoretically prioritize CCD zero in this scenario. Mm -hmm. But you can adjust these for yourself. Um, again, useful if you're overclocking and you're trying to stress test certain CCDs, things like that. Or if you find that a certain program um, isn't behaving as it's supposed to. Uh, again, as programs update themselves, as AMD and Microsoft keep working together on fine tuning this, um, that, that shouldn't be a problem. But uh, you know, it's there for you if you want to mess with it. So that I category is, uh, is extreme tweaker for a reason. That's for the power users for sure.